Pelosi has been getting criticized from pretty much everyone who's not progressive. The criticism isn't only coming from the right wing, now we're hearing from people on the left who are attacking her pretty aggressively. Now, recently in an interview, Aaron Sorkin wanted to make a comment about some of the new Democrats in Congress. It wasn't specifically about AOC, but I'm sure she was included in what you're about to see in this video. I like Kamala Harris a lot, I like Joe Biden a lot. Uh, I. Uh, I, I really like the, the, the new crop of young people uh, who were just elected to Congress. They now need to stop acting like young people, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, it, it's time to do that. Uh, you know, there's, there's a, uh, I think that there's a, a great opportunity here, now more than ever, uh, for Democrats to be the non- Stupid party uh, to point out the difference that you know we are uh, that it's not just about transgender bathrooms um, that, that that's a Republican talking point they're trying to distract you uh, with um, that you know we are uh, that we haven't forgotten the economic anxiety uh, of the middle class um, but we we're, we're going to be smart about this we're not going to be mean about it. Okay, so what stood out to me the most there, Brett, was his statement about how Democrats finally have a chance to be the non-stupid party, mm -hmm. which I thought was strange given the era that we're currently in, where Trump is the president and he identifies as a Republican. I think that's why he said we have the opportunity to be the non-stupid party, because Trump is being the stupid one. Oh, I see. But I just don't think it doesn't seem like he's really been following this group of people. No, in no, earnest. not at all. Because look, I think that he makes a good point when he talks about the broader issue of what Democrats focus on. So, look, identity politics is not working for us, okay? I'm not saying that we shouldn't care about the social issues, those issues matter. But you start losing people when you're hyper focused on one social issue or two social issues, as opposed to the broader problem of, of you know, economic injustice, you know, the income inequality, the wealth inequality. Those are issues that resonate not only with the left, but also with people on the right. Trump ran using a populist message. Mm -hmm. And even though he's not a populist, even though he doesn't actually care about the economic well-being of, of most Americans. But my point here is AOC and the, the new Democrats are pushing for economic justice. That's really the heart of what they're fighting for here. It's yeah. not about identity politics. And I challenge him to go through everything AOC has said and try to find the, the like stupid thing. Right. Like there are times where she has been on camera during an interview and has misspoken. It was unfortunately seized upon in an unfair way by people on the right. And unfortunate, right. and the triple unfortunate thing about that is that Aaron Sorkin saw those headlines and was like, this is what's actually happening. That's what's so frustrating from Aaron Sorkin. Someone who, I mean, first of all, young people have made the changes. Mm -hmm. The younger generation are the ones who say, listen, this is not okay. And in some ways saying act like an older generation is to allow things to keep happening that have always been happening. Is this the inevitable outcome of getting older? Like, are we gonna look at younger generations when we're Aaron Sorkin's age and just assume things about them? Because I agree with you in that I don't think that he's actually paid attention to what these freshmen uh, representatives have been fighting for. In fact, let me give you uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's response to Sorkin's comment. She says, newsflash, Medicare for all and equal rights aren't trends. When people complain about low turnout in some demos, it's not because communities are apathetic, it's because they don't see you fighting for them. If we don't show up for people, why should you feel entitled to their vote? She also says, let's dig into gravitas because it's an ambiguous word, selectively applied Applied. Ever wonder how the expression um, that's feminine, working class, queer, or people of color isn't deemed as having gravitas, but talking like an Aaron Sorkin character does, men have gravitas, women get likable. Mm -hmm. And I think she makes a really good point there. And you know, 
I feel a little called out myself because I keep referring to her as likable, but it's because of the way she handles these criticisms. It's mm -hmm. not because oh, she's a woman and she's cuddly. It's because she somehow manages to dismantle all of the critics in such an effective way. And she did that she did that right here. I mean, by mentioning Medicare for all and all the real hearty issues that establishment Democrats have been avoiding. Right. And there are there's a decision to make as to whether we address the criticisms of AOC, right? Mm -hmm. Do we cover the unfair criticisms? And the answer is yes. Why? Precisely for the reason that she is tweeting how she's tweeting when she's tweeting. Because she takes this as an opportunity to say, "Oh, you want to talk about it? If you want to talk about it, here are the answers." Mm -hmm. And not just here are the answers. Here they are in 240 characters in a way that people can finally wrap their mind around. Because you're going from a, a, a failure on the Democratic side and Hillary Clinton, which was a low communication politician. She could not communicate her ideas effectively to the biggest superstar in politics right now, which is the highest communicating politician, as evidenced by the fact that she unseated Joe Crowley and has two million Twitter followers in five minutes. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I love seeing her uh, go after these critics. She does it in such a great way. And honestly, it it influences the way that I handle critics as well. Because you don't have to get salty every time. You know, there are ways to fight back with evidence, facts, the truth, and she does it really well. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.